Hello and welcome to my basic Boucheron guide. So this is a guide for maddening. This also assumes you're not running DLC. Uh, DLC does change how you can invest in units. So that does move these units up or down in terms of relative power. But in this video, I'm going to be outlining what Boucheron is good at, uh, what his growths are, uh, what kind of classes he excels in. So to begin, Let's talk about his growths. So he has 85% health growth at base, 20% strength, 50% dex, 45% speed, 35% defense, 20% res, 15% luck, and an insane 20% build. So he has one of the highest, if not the highest build. Actually, he does have the highest default build growth in the game. So in fixed mode, that's two points of build per 10 level ups, which is actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, he does have low strength growth on an axe unit, which is weird, but he also has high dex, high speed, and very high health. So arguably his growths are pretty good, uh, and they do allow him to go into a lot of different things. Now he does have strength growth problems, so that kind of needs addressed by his class, so you want him on a class that at least puts him at 40% or higher strength growth, just because he's going to not be able to effectively deal damage unless he has axes, maybe lances, and high strength growth. Uh, but that being said, he is a decent unit if you can invest in him. It can be difficult to do so though, because these early units are always competing with each other for XP, and there are definitely better options. And also other things kind of outclass him for free. Uh, the game hands you better units later on that basically do the thing he does, but just better. Uh, his passive move to tears, when an ally joins a chain attack, in the unit's combat, he deals plus two damage. So this would be really good on weapons that double, that are light enough for him to double with, um, or on a brave weapon. On a brave weapon, this is plus eight damage. So his best use case is probably some kind of brave axe build or brave lance build, just so that he can make use of this in his build and speed stat. So he also starts off with, I think, 300 SP, which is very low. So if you want him to hit 1000 SP, before chapter 10 to get some early game 1000 SP skills, he will have a hard time getting there unless you go out of your way to, you know, put something like Micaiah on him so he can constantly get more SP from an emblem ring while also healing to get more SP from healing. That would be a way to power level him, which would be kind of weird because he's kind of like an axe damage unit, but you could do that to make him more viable, but you'd have to pull Micaiah off someone else. So in order for him to exceed, someone else would have to suffer, essentially. Um, okay, so pros and cons of the unit. Uh, the speed is there, the health is there, the dex is there. So he has, he has, he's fast, he has accuracy, and he has durability, which is a good combination. And the build stat is absolutely insane. Uh, basically, I would say his best use case is axes or lances. Swords... His lower strength is going to hurt him here. His lower strength growth, it's not. It's going to be a bad thing with swords, but because he has such high build, he can really get away with running pretty much axes, which are the highest damage weapons. And you're going to want to engrave these axes so that they're accurate. Uh, but with his high dex, he should be able to consistently hit things with axes. Now, that being said, he wants to be on some kind of axe class that improves his strength growth, which Warrior and Berserker both do that. So cons of the unit, I would say there's better options. He's not a bad unit if you invest in him, but there's definitely better investments to make early game. Like Jean and Anna are competing for the Makaya. Well, actually really Anna is, because Jean can, he starts out being able to heal. So Anna, he's basically competing with Anna for Makaya if you want to power level her early. You only really need to do this for one to two chapters, so you could just do that for like two chapters, you know, give Anna Makaya, and then afterwards give it back to Boucheron. So that's something you could do. But he is going to be competing for combat XP. There are definitely better units to funnel XP into. Uh, overall, I would say with investment, he's probably like a C tier, maybe a B tier unit. Just because I, I feel like there's just better options early game. Axes kind of aren't that good early as well. They have accuracy problems. He tends to have like 60 to 80% hit rates, averaging at 70 and 70% aren't very reliable, and you usually will have to pulse if you miss, so that's definitely a downside. As you approach middle game, 
accuracy engravings are very common and axes become way more reliable, but weapons like the hammer, like you, you can see some of these hit rates. Now this, this doesn't factor in the enemy's avoid yet either. So even though like hit 116 looks good, if an enemy has 30 avoid, you know, it's like 80% hit rate. So it's not as reliable as it seems. So hammer is notoriously inaccurate, for example. Uh, pole axe, kind of similar. Axes, axes, you know, it's the same thing it's been in most games. You have huge damage, but tens, you know, high sp or low speed because of the weight and low accuracy. Uh, but if he levels up enough with his decks, he should be able to offset that a little bit. And long term, he should be fine. But short term, he's just kind of okay. He's not like one of your early game hard carries. So, okay, so those are the cons of the unit. Uh, level investment, I would say, is medium to high to get him online because you're going to have to intentionally set up kills for him. He has a hard time one rounding early game because of his speed. So even though he starts off with decent build, he still has a hard time one rounding. Uh, he probably won't be doubling many things just because of his base speed is low or just because his base speed is low. And he usually needs someone else to deal damage and then he sets and then he kills something. And that's kind of how you have to level him. Alternatively, there's always Micaiah, which is kind of like the universal solution to leveling units that have a hard time leveling up. So putting Makai on him could be an easy way to hit, get him into level 10. I think once he hits level 10 and you put him on like Warrior or Berserker, he should be fine. I think Warrior is probably his best class. Uh, we'll go over different classes. There's, he has, actually he has some options. So, all right, let's go over classes now. Okay, so I would keep him off swords. So I wouldn't put him on Swordmaster or anything like that. Hero could be a decent option for him if you're going to be running axes. The sword aspect of hero could be nice for accuracy because swords are very accurate. So it kind of gives you the option to flip a switch and turn on huge accuracy. And Brave Assist is decent. So hero is a good option for him. It does look terrible though. Uh, Halberdier is always good on classes that have high strength growth, but in this case, he has low strength growth. He could be decent at Halberdier, but it's not taking advantage of his build growth and his speed, so I don't recommend it. It would be viable, though. Royal Knight kind of has average growths. He could go on this. It's not going to pop off. I think it gets like 15% strength growth. Let's see. Let's see if I've memorized these. No, it's 10. It's 15% magic. Okay. So it's actually, yeah, I would say don't put him on Royal Knight. 30% strength growth, he's going to suffer. He's not going to be able to, to make things happen. Now, Berserker is good on him because it, it gives him 30% more strength growth, so it puts him at 50%. It also gives him 10% more build, putting him at 30% build growth. So some people meme on Berserker and say it's kind of trash, but it does have... So, all right, so Berserker versus Warrior... Berserker has more build, but one less speed. So you can so that's basically a, a trade-off because you're going to be using that point of build very likely, unless you're late game and your build's super high. So generally, they're about as fast as each other. Berserker has one more point in strength, a little bit less dex, a little bit less defense, a little bit less res, same luck. Uh, but the growths on Berserker plus ten percent build, uh, you still you do get plus ten percent speed. So the speed is similar, but you also get plus 30% strength growth, which is absolutely insane. And Warrior is only plus 10, or I'm sorry, plus 20% strength growth. So Berserker long term, you'll be hitting harder, and you'll be basically around the same speed as a Warrior. Warrior has 15% more speed growth than Berserker. Or I'm sorry, 5%. So you're looking at 10 versus 15% speed growth, so a difference of five. So in this case, he would be 55% speed growth on Berserker or 60% speed growth on Warrior. So the diff that's a difference of one point of speed every 20 levels. So <laughs> not, not the biggest difference, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but with Berserker, you do get one point of strength every 10 levels over Warrior. However, Warrior does allow you to do longbow uh, chain attacks and use bows, which is more flexibility, and it definitely has the better passive. Hitting a broken enemy is very nice. It's also really good at dealing with worms. You use Fracture or just break an enemy. 
It's good for setting up kills. So between the two of them, I would say go Berserker if you want to just have him use like a Brave Axe and just go nuts and just try to hard focus in on the strength and the build. And if you want flexibility and the more long-term viable option, I would say Warrior is better because it gets you a strong Axe unit who can also flex on bows. And by flex on bows, I mean he's like a flex unit. You know, he can run bows as well. So I'd say Warrior is probably one of his best classes and Berserker is a good class option for just going hardcore into damage. Uh, just because it'll, it'll get a few extra points of strength. And that doesn't seem like much, but consider him getting 30 level ups, which, you know, most units level up 30 to 40 times if you're going to mainline them. That's three to four more points of strength. And on a brave weapon, that's plus four damage per 10 level ups. So three more points of strength is an extra 12 damage on a brave weapon. So it does matter. Like it, and the speed, they both have the same... Or not the same. They have similar speed growth. So Warrior is very slightly faster. Now long term Warrior will be slightly faster because of his build catching up. So even though you get one more build that's good early, but later on his build growth will be 25% on Warrior and 30% on Berserker. Uh, the build will eventually hit a point where he's exceeding weapon weight because if you get 3 points of 2.5 to 3 points of build per 10 level ups, you will eventually have enough build that axes are weightless, so that's definitely one huge advantage of this unit over other units. It's just unfortunate that he's competing with other things for XP so early. Uh, I would not put him on bow classes in general, like uh, excluding warrior because that's more of an axe class that has access to bows. I would skip those. Uh, for armor classes, you're not really taking advantage of his unique stats. His unique speed and build combination, which really wants him on some kind of high strength axe class. So I would skip general. I would skip great knight. I would not put him on these. Paladin. Paladin could be decent. I think it's 20%. Or no, it's 15% strength growth. Um, maybe Paladin isn't the best option for him. 35% strength growth. You know, it's not the worst. But like, what's the advantage here? Like, what does Paladin give him that Warrior Berserker doesn't give him? Plus one move, it gives, I think, yeah, it gives less build, gives less strength. So he his main thing is he's his speed is fine and he just needs strength. So I would say Paladin isn't the best thing for him. Wolf Knight, same thing. You have to think about some of these classes in terms of what they do. So Wolf Knight takes a unit that has high strength growth and gives it speed. So if you take a unit with high speed growth and give it more speed, but it needs strength, it's a bad matchup. So Wolf Knight, I would say, is not very good on him. Same thing with Griffin Knight. Uh, however, Wyvern would be very good on him. Wyvern gives plus 20% strength growth. It also gives plus 5% speed, so that would put him at 50% speed growth. Now, with his build, also Wyvern gives plus 5% build, but with his build growth, he would be 25% build growth on Wyvern. So that's 2.5 build levels every 10 level ups. That adds up quick, and he would be a menace in the skies. Also, Air Raid is nice if you use it correctly and attack things out of bounds. It does have less strength than uh, Warrior and Berserker, but it's way more flexible, and it also allows him to use like multiple weapons, so you can get spears and axes on him, you can get swords and axes. Uh, I would say spears and axes is probably better, because he wants that higher base damage. You have to think about him in terms of fixing his strength. So Wyvern, I would say, is also a, a contender for his best class. I would keep him off magic. <laughs> his... Um, his magic growth is zero, so yeah, don't put him on magic. Not a good idea. Same thing with the punching classes. They need magic to scale their damage, so he'd be bad at that. So basically, his best classes are Wyvern Knight, Berserker, and Warrior. And potentially, if you want to, you could put him on like General, but that just throws away his speed. You could put him on Halberdier, but it's not really taking advantage of his kit because Halberdier just wants the highest strength possible and then to double with pincer attack. So it's just, it's just kind of a waste unless your, your unit is, you know, an absolute slow growth, slow speed, but high strength growth unit. All right. So those are classes. Uh, good early passives. So you would have to put an emblem ring on him so he starts getting more SP faster. Emblem rings are double the rate of bond rings. Um, so he does start off with 300 SP, which is difficult uh, to get his SP up. But early passives, you can't go wrong with things like Cantor. It just makes your units flexible with positioning and mobility. Um, because he has high health and potentially high speed long term, 
he could be a good candidate for off tanking. Uh, momentum could be decent on him if you want to go the wyvern route so he can dive. Momentum only affects the first hit though, but it's still extra damage. And on wyvern, you can consistently get off plus four to six extra damage from momentum. So that's a pretty good option for him. Strength plus two is okay, but getting strength plus three. So strength plus two from Roy costs you 1k SP. Strength plus three costs you 2k SP. So if you're going to prove his damage, you probably should wait until you get Ike which is after chapter 13. Ike has Axe Power 1 and 2. Axe Power 1 uh, should be minus 10 avoid. Actually, I can check it. I have Ike. So let's go. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is what it is. 1,000 SP, plus 2 damage with Axes, plus 2 attack with Axes, sorry, because it affects magical Axes, and then minus 10 avoid, and then also uh, minus 10 avoid, and then 2k for Axe Power 2, but plus 4 damage. So... Way better than Strength plus 2, and then if, if you can eventually get Axe Power 3, it continues to scale the damage, so it's fantastic with Brave Weapons, which I think is what he wants to be on, some kind of upgraded Brave Weapon. Uh, you don't want to increase the weight of the Brave Weapon, though. I actually stopped running him because he, he hit a falling off point. I didn't level him up, up, up enough early game. Um, I didn't show any unit favoritism in this run. But he just fell off. All right, yeah, so avoid minus 10. So the avoid minus 10 stays the same, but the damage increases. So for 2k SP, this would probably be the, the play. And you want to get like a brave weapon with an engraving that increases the damage by one. And if you increase the weight by one, who cares? He can eventually wield it, you know, with no loss in speed. I would say axe power and then probably like speed plus three. So like... Speed plus three is only 500 SP, and then you can get Axe Power one pretty early on, so then he's plus two damage, and then he's plus three speed. This helps push his speed over. Uh, speed plus three is extremely cheap for how good it is, and it'll just speed him up, and that'll get him into doubling. So I would say that should be your focus. So you probably should just save his SP and not spend it before chapter 10. Uh, okay, so equipment... So this is general axe equipment that's good on any axe unit. So let's just go down to him. Okay. So axes have some flexibility. They have pole axe, which is anti-horse. You can upgrade this relatively cheaply. So getting it to plus one to plus three is pretty nice. It, it allows your axe units to just whack a dude on a, on a horse for huge damage. And then same thing with hammer. It allows them to whack armor. And upgrading it is relatively cheap. Uh, Steel Axe can be decent to upgrade. He doesn't need it to be upgraded, though. Uh, you're probably better off waiting for the Silver, the Brave, because he will be able to wield it without downside with investment. So in this case, he's low speed because he's only level 9, and this is like chapter 15 by this point. So I've just stopped using him by chapter 13. Um, you do have to invest in him to make him worthwhile. But Tomahawk with an accuracy engraving is always good. Uh, silver is steel axe with some kind of accuracy and damage engraving is good. This particular engraving that's on his steel axe is great on a brave weapon. It increases damage accuracy and it also increases weight by one, but his build will be so high it won't matter. So it's a good emblem or it's a, it's a good engraving that other units have a hard time using. So he actually is one of the few candidates for this, for this engraving on a brave axe. Uh, other brave axe users that have no chance in hell of doubling, you just throw the Ike engraving on it because you know you're not going to double anyways, so you still get the, the two hits from the Brave Axe instead of quadding. So when you double with a Brave Axe, it hits four times. That's what that means. Um, yeah, but he could actually legitimately quad with a Brave Axe with his speed growth, but he would require a lot of investment to get there. So that's just a consideration. But Hammer is decent. Pole Axe is decent. Now, Hammer... Like, if you had to choose between the two, I'd rather have Poleaxe because you have mages and things with Levin Sword. So you're going to be able to deal with armor easier than horses because the horse enemies, like the uh, Wolf Knights, they're extremely fast. Very few units can double them, and they tend to one-round your slower units if they're, like, more vulnerable. So him being able to one-shot or deal heavy damage to these fast units is probably more worthwhile than... Killing armor, which are kind of a meme enemy, so I would say prioritize the pole axe over the hammer. Uh, the steel axe is decent. I would skip iron and slim. You can use slim for accuracy early game, but after that, I would switch to steel 
Uh, you can also upgrade your steel and put an engraving on it early game so it's more consistent. So you can just use that. And he can use that throughout most of the run until he gets his Brave Axe. Um, yeah, but you can also upgrade a silver into a Brave Axe if you want to. It'll cost you some silver, so we can actually go check that out. So if you want to get him a Brave Axe early, that is an option. It'll it'll cost you some resources, but it could be worth it if you want to. If you plan on running him as one of your damage carries, honestly, he has the potential to be a damage carry. Uh, with enough investment, he has the potential to even be an A tier. I would say on average, though, if you're just running him as one of the units on your team, he's like a B slash C tier unit. Uh, but if you hardcore invest in him, and it would require hardcore investment, this would be above and beyond. He could potentially be an A tier damage carry with high speed and high build. Uh, all right, so let's go to refine. So let's go to silver. All right, so here's Brave Axe. So it actually isn't that expensive to create and the resources aren't unreasonable. So you could get Brave Axe pretty early. And then if you wanted to promote your Steel Axe into silver, you could actually create a Silver Axe pretty early and then create a Brave Axe pretty early for him if you wanted to. It would cost you, you know, whatever these resources are. So it'd cost you 200 iron because you have to do this twice. It'd cost you 20 steel, 2 silver, and 4k. That's really not that bad. I mean, it, the only thing that hurts really is the, the iron cost because early game, a lot of your units are going to be competing over who gets what upgrades and when. So like burning through 200 iron early is kind of painful. Burning through 20 steel and 2 silver definitely isn't optimal. But if you're trying to just build this dude out to be a brave like nuke, He's, he's going to be one of the few units who can reliably use a Brave Axe because of a lot of different features of him. The high build, uh, the speed, his passive. So like you, you leverage his passive, you leverage Axe Power, you leverage upgrading the Brave Axe with an engraving that increases its weight by one. That's the key thing. So let's actually look at what this looks like. I just won't save it. I'll just, I'll just show it. So let's say what this Brave Axe looks like. We're going to upgrade this and then I'll exchange two on that we'll throw away a silver i don't recommend doing things like this but <laughs> we're just doing it because i don't have access to that other engraving so that's why i have to switch this over instead of just upgrade to that silver axe you do lose your plus so all right so here we go all right so brave axe has been obtained so here's the brave axe that's seven might so let's go ahead and improve it so you you factor in so this is chapter, this is before chapter 15, and I can plus three this Brave Axe pretty easily. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's a Brave Axe plus three with decent hit rate. Uh, you factor in his passive, you get him max power, you get him some speed. He could start popping off. He could potentially, I don't know that he'd be S tier because he still has mobility issues, and all he really would be doing is one rounding non-armor units for the most part. Um, so he, he doesn't have like the flexibility to just kill anything. He can't kill super fast enemies in one round with this thing. He can't kill armor units in one round with this thing. Um, so, yeah. It's it's viable. It's good. I, I swear I just saw like flipped normals on this 3D model. And it's kind of tripping me up. Or maybe I'm just like seeing things. Flipped normals in 3D are when your model has like inverted faces. So maybe it's just like a visual thing. I just looked like it was. All right. Anyways, he's a solid unit with high investment. Uh, without high investment, I would say you're better off just running Panette or other things. Like Ty Timera, Marin, and Panette displace so many of these early game units just because of how strong they start and how little investment is required. So funneling XP into like Alir, into Chloe, into Anna, into Jean, uh, to some degree Saline, Louis. A lot of people swear by Louis. I don't, I don't personally enjoy running him, but I'm just going to assume they know what they're talking about <laughs> and just and just give it to him and just say, yeah, he's good. <laughs> I don't like using tanks. So, all right, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Uh, feel free to drop a uh, comment as to how you run Boucheron, and I'll see you in the next one.